Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor Stephen Jurdy at Zion Lutheran Church in Wausau and Bethany Lutheran Church in Anawa, here to share with you a word at the middle of the week. And I'm speaking to you from the nave, or the main worship space, of Zion Lutheran Church as we prepare for our second Ash Wednesday service this evening at 6.30 p.m. There's also an Ash Wednesday service at Bethany at 6.30 p.m. too. This week, I would like to speak with you about the picture hanging behind me, and I'm going to show you a second picture in a little bit. Throughout the sanctuary here at Zion, and I'm going to turn my camera or my phone so that you can see that, on all of the pillars, you can see that there are paintings of the sufferings of Christ hanging throughout the sanctuary. And each week, I'm going to speak with you a little bit about each of those paintings and uh, some of the unique things we see happening in them. All these paintings were made about seven years ago, I believe, by students at Wausau East High School. It was a very exciting cooperation between our congregation of Zion and the students at Wausau East, in which they reflected on poetry, on the sufferings of Christ, and painted these pictures in response to that poetry. And now we hang those paintings every Lent in order to help proclaim what our Lord has suffered for our sake. And so I thought, well, why not share that with you and share with you also some of the creative ideas that each of these students put in these paintings. So this painting it, right behind me is the very first painting in the series. It hangs on the, pul on the, the, uh, the pillar that is closest to the pulpit. There's the pulpit and there's the painting. And what you see there is an image of Christ standing with his arms outstretched uh, he seems to be standing in a courtyard of some sort because you see the gate behind him. Beyond that gate, you'll see sort of three shadows. See if I can point my finger awkwardly to the three shadows there. Uh, that's, there they are. Uh, these three shadows, those are actually three shadows that are being cast by three trees, reminding us of the three crosses uh, that were in his future, the cross on which he would be hanged and then also on which he would be hung, and then also uh, the two crosses on which a thief or a bandit was crucified on either side of him. The, uh, the, the person who painted this picture, I thought, had a really creative idea. They not, she not only showed Jesus with his arms outstretched, but she also has a little shadow of Jesus. Again, I'm going to try to point to that. See this shadow coming out of Jesus? That then is in the shape of the cross, because by putting his arms outstretched, that already evokes the image of the cross. This painting is to, supposed to depict the moment in which Jesus is condemned, and he is accepting that condemnation. He is submitting himself to the condemnation laid upon him by Pontius Pilate, uh, he is saying, yes, I will bear that burden of the sin of the world's rejection of me. And so a very, a very fitting, very inspiring image. Also, we see that that image or that shadow that I pointed to just a little bit ago, the shadow of Christ, that's in purple, the color of Lent. That was done purposely. Most of the paintings found ways to incorporate purple into their color scheme because these would be used during Lent. And then all around Jesus otherwise, we see blue, and that blue is reminding us of the baptismal waters in which the sacrifice of Christ is applied to us. And we are promised that we have died with Christ, that we might also rise with him. Now we're going to walk over to the other side and look at the very last painting in the series. Let me turn this around. I don't have one of those nifty sticks you can put your phone on. There we go. This is the very last painting in this series. And so I'm showing you the very first one and the very last one to sort of, sort of give you a sense of where, we, where we're going to begin and where we're going to end. And so this is all on the other side. Uh, we, we've gone over the other side. This, is, this one is closest to the lectern. You kind of see the lectern there behind me. And this is Jesus after he has died, as he's being taken down from the cross. Again, you can see all kinds of purple uh, there in that photo. The, this is really the, or not photo, in this painting. This is the painting that uses the deepest amount of purple, I would say. Uh, this is the moment, of course, where the sacrifice is complete, where Jesus has borne 
all of these sins of the world, all of the world's rejection of God and of his mercy. And as you can see, someone is sort of sort of lowering Jesus from the cross behind the cross. You see an arm coming over that, a, a Roman soldier perhaps. And then his mother Mary is kneeling and receiving his body into her arms. And so this is a very famous painting, not this particular painting, but its subject is a very famous painting because it, um, throughout Western history, Western culture, we have this image of Mary taking the body of Christ into her arms and grieving for her son who has died. That is the very last painting in our series of the sufferings of Christ. And very fitting, of course, because where that leads us is right up to the altar, which is where we receive the body of Christ today. The body of Christ is, of course, risen. Uh, he is not still dead. He is with us always to the end of the age, and so he feeds his church with his holy body and blood, the same holy body and blood that bore the sins of the world, bore them away into the grave, and that now is risen and rules forever in the power of God. Next week, we'll continue to look at some more of those images, those paintings, and how they preach the gospel to us as they lead us into the sufferings of Christ. God's peace be with you. Thanks.